Welcome to the big design trends for 2023, which happens to be Web 3D based on a recent article by Design Moto. Let's dive in. Here's the Design Moto article. I was actually pleasantly surprised to see the 3D stuff mentioned in it and aligning with what I think is upcoming for web design stuff. But we've got the top design trends for 2023. They list out all the things here, right? We've got interaction. We've got all these lists of items in the go big category, which I summarize in a different way. Immersive, unrealistic 3D worlds, gamification, abstract 3D centerpieces, and interactive product displays. And I have my own way of recombining these into three different areas and each of those with three subsections and I'll go over that in a bit. They have a whole bunch of different links that describe each of their ideas. I th there's four or five links in here and we're going to go through each of those, especially in the way that I think they align with what I see as the top web 3D trends. But the main thing to point out here is that, you know, they say, that the go big option is all about 3D, right? We've got 3D worlds, we've got games, we've got 3D centerpieces and interactive product displays, which again are 3D. So check it out. So I had fun making this obnoxious animation. It shows the three ways that I would divide up the go big option for web design in 2023. We've got immersive environments, lights, camera, and audio. Interaction, which has customization, letting people play, and a level up. 3D hero objects, which have focus, detail, and animation. We're going to go through an example of each, and I hope you like what I came up with. The first site in our list that comes from the Design Moda article is this JimmyNelson.com, and they put it in the immersive environment category. I thought this was just amazing the way that it has all the 3d effects you're sitting in a 3d environment it's all interactive it has a familiar website feel it's not like you don't know how to navigate around but it's you know it has a, a great atmosphere to it uh, including the audio you gotta you gotta visit it to check it out all right next up we've got their gamification category and it looks like it's something by Google B Internet Awesome. I might actually skip through or edit out some of these things because they have a lot of animation that's kind of filler or text that goes around. But it's literally a game. And the low poly aspect of it being in the web doesn't bother me at all. You know, it's got its own little character to it. So pretty cool. Just amazing to see what people can do in a browser. You know, this isn't a game engine of any sort. This one was in the Design Moto article, is one of the ones that I actually don't like at all. So they do a whole lot of unique animations, but what I really don't like is that it hijacks the scroll. And that, it, that always irritates me because I, I expect a certain action when I do a scroll and for it to do something else is always irritating. It is pretty creative. It defies your expectations. All I'm doing is hitting the scroll wheel here and it goes all different kinds of directions. So that's kind of neat. I think the downside is, is that given the, uh, the goal of what this site is, it probably is not appropriate to advertising in an apartment and you know, get doing a contact form or whatever. It's a, it's a little outlandish for that. I would, encourage, I would encourage you to always think about your goals and your audience and if some of this stuff makes sense for that target. All right, this is the last one from the Design Moto list. I really enjoy this. It's not quite an immersive environment, but it still has like a theme from edge to edge of the browser. I would call this more of a, you know, a centerpiece or a, a hero object. And we have to click and drag this, I guess. But this is all of 3D objects, and then they've got some foreground layers and stuff. Uh, characters me. But still pretty cool. Uh, I guess you could put this in the game category as well, or the 
you know, building and customizing, as I like to call it, um, which I think is really neat to get people invested into an experience, depending on if that audience is actually going to be interested in doing that for what they showed up for. Really cool environment created here. Uh, the magical pantry.com. I'll have all the links in the description for everything, everything I'm showing. Now we're working off of my list and this is what I call an immersive environment. You're, you're like a character and it has a perspective. I really enjoy this even though it's simple and, and I think actually it's good to have simple examples so that you know you don't think that you have to go crazy and uh, create hundreds of megs of downloads for people to get an experience like this. I liked the environment category so much I had to create, I had to show another one. So this is also a really good example of something from a perspective camera. Obviously it's a popular subject here, but you know, you can really feel like it's an environment. You've got a couple of characters that are in there with you and some really good materials and lighting. So this one is in the environment audio category. And I really recommend that you go check it out because all of this is reactive to music. And you can see the graphic equalizer going on in the background. It's a little responsive to uh, your actions, but just it being responsive to the music is really cool. Some of the other environments we showed had audio in the background, but this one really just works with the audio rather than has it as part of the atmosphere. Pretty cool effect. Now our last example for the environment category is lighting. And I really enjoyed the lighting in this one, especially how it uses the different colored lights and you can see the light sources and the way that there's reflections. You know, the, the light colors draw your attention to the center monitor. But overall, really well done. I think there's some other light sources in here besides even the monitors so that you can see these foreground elements. When you get into the 3D website stuff, lighting is a crucial component and often overlooked. Now we're in the category of 3D hero objects. And here you can see we've got a laptop. I'm calling this the objects of focus category. We've got a laptop. It's fairly realistic. It's floating. Kind of neat that it has the shadow underneath and that is dynamic. But what's really neat here is that the website within the laptop is an actual website and you can scroll around in it and stuff. Um, yep, even click on the menu and stuff. So that is pretty cool that you can mix the HTML and the 3D web stuff uh, as you need to for your project. The second category for 3D hero objects is detail. And here we've got a really nicely detailed watch. If you were a company selling this watch, this would be a pretty cool way to display it. You can see that there's nice bump texture for the leather on the armband. You can see the stitches. And a lot of these are just textures. And then this label that's floating in front of it is actually an HTML label just intermixed with the, the 3D elements. What really makes this stand out is a lot of the textures. I am impressed with the way that it came out. Something to re remember is having good detail that shows up doesn't necessarily mean it has to be in your geo. It can be in the textures or the way that they're combined together. And here's our final category for the 3D hero objects. This is the animated category and this I don't, probably my favorite non-environment example that I've shown, although there is a cool floor that goes into the horizon, but this is reacting to the mouse. And, you know, it's got this glowing disc around it and everything, but what a cool looking character. Man, I would love to have something like this in a, in a website. Even has some lighting sources. You can see the shadow that it's got on the ground. It just makes you feel like it's there. All right, one more for the interaction category. This is in the let people play. Again, I, I would add some caution on this. I don't think people generally want to go to your website to play a game. It could be the case depending on whatever you put together, but you know, consider your goals, consider your audience, 
and how much they're actually going to want to play with something like this versus versus how much effort it's going to take you to put together. That being said, this is actually a pretty cool little demo. Like it's a little pinball thing going on. And really I think what makes more sense than a direct game when people talk about gamification is it give them something that levels them up, right? A reason, whether it's points or reasons to come back that, you know, give them achievements, something that gives them that, that level up experience. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to mean it's directly a game. You know, that's primarily what people mean when they say gamification. All right, enough playing with this. As always, thanks for joining me. I've got this up on the screen, Theater.js, because it's something I've been messing with. It's a pretty cool library. I'm going to do a full video on it. I've got lots more tutorials coming up. I've got more hype videos like this one coming up. Specifically on this topic, I'm interested to know what you think is going to be a big topic in 2023. What are the big design trends? And also, what are the key things that we can't forget about that's not necessarily a new thing but is foundational such as keeping in mind your target goals and audience that's it for now and i'll see you online